What's our experience in Bradford? Uh, this gives you an idea of the background of the patients, what they've uh, suffered, and you'll see that about, uh, well, they've all had angiography. It is a requirement for us to get funding to have an angiogram, uh, not in every patient, but an angiogram uh, at the current level of symptoms. So if someone has had stable but severe angina for two years, uh, we wouldn't repeat the angiogram, but if they've suddenly got worse three months ago, we'd repeat the angiogram, because there is the possibility something's changed and is now interventional. But all our patients have received angiography. The majority have had myocardial infarction, about 80% previous coronary bypass surgery, and some twice. An intervention, both angioplasty and stenting, is over 80%, and often multiple procedures. Other interventions are things like spinal cord stimulation, nerve blocks, etc., and uh, I'm just going to skip that one because it's a bit out of date. This is the more up-to-date uh, results on, um, on symptoms. We're using the Canadian classification uh, class, uh, class uh, 1 to 4. And this is showing you the number of patients who improve by, uh, who didn't improve or improved by 1, CCS class 2 and 3. This is a pretty dramatic improvement seen in a very small number. Very few patients that don't respond at all, about 10%, slightly less than 10%. Um, I think the average CCS class improvement was 1.2 in our population. And uh, about 10 to 15% have become asymptomatic. So about half the American data. But our patients are a lot worse to start with. This is evidence on exercise testing. You can imagine a lot of these patients can't exercise, they're so bad, or they have something precluding exercise, like a conduction abnormality on their ECGs. And a lot have come from other parts of England or Scotland. So we, we don't have exercise tests on everyone. Probably uh, of those that have been followed up for more than a year, uh, about half of our, about a third of our patients had exercise testing. But we can see uh, a highly significant improvement of exercise tolerance, but most importantly, the exercise improvement is maintained uh, beyond a year in our patients. And there we're going from about three minutes and 20 seconds up to whatever that is about, um, it's about an extra 80 seconds, so well over a minute improved exercise trance, which is quite significant. This is the objective measure of time to ST depression. Again, it's improved significantly but maintained. Uh, now, this is the interesting slide because no one's published this, but this is, uh, I told you at the beginning, that our patients, uh, they complain of breathlessness as much or more than they do angina. They get tightness and they get breathless. And the breathlessness improves as much, this is the time on the treadmill to when they start to get breathless. That improves as much as their angina improves. This is just one of our patients. We're not resourced to do, my view, scanning, nor might it be ethical to subject our patients to uh, to my view, scan on a serial basis, but this was just one patient with a rather dramatic improvement in uh, perfusion. But one of the American studies uh, shows that uh, uh, using my view scanning, uh, where they were exercising their patients to the same duration, uh, showed that 67% showed complete resolution <coughs> of defects, 11% partial resolution, about a quarter no change. Um, so there is quite good evidence to improve myocardial perfusion on radionuclear scanning. Now, for our uh, commissioners and our managers, uh, it's very important to demonstrate cost savings, and this is our uh, admission data. We've, uh, sorry, I've lost the bottom of the slide, but basically we, we only looked at patients treated uh, for more than six months, and the, the average duration was two and a half years, or just under two and a half years, and for each patient, however long it was since they were treated, we went back an equal length of time before they were treated. Okay? So we were looking at the admission rate for a comparable period of time, which averaged over two years before treatment and after. And there's a three-and-a-half-fold reduction in admission rate and a three, similar reduction in the number of days that patients were spending in hospital uh, following ECP.